On this question, we want to discuss the continuity of the function, state the interval where the function is continuous, and whether the discontinuities are removable or non-removable. Our function is f of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 3 over x squared minus 9. So this function, I'm going to write it a little bit bigger, x squared plus 2x minus 3 over x squared minus 9 is a rational function. And because it's a rational function, I know that if I find the domain of this rational function, that is going to be the same as the places where this function is continuous. So by finding the domain, I'm going to find any discontinuities as well as where the function is continuous. When you're looking for the domain of a rational function, we're going to focus on the denominator because division by zero is undefined and that will be a restricted value. So if we take our denominator and set it equal to zero, we're going to find where this function has discontinuities and undefined spots. I can factor x squared minus 9 into x plus 3 times x minus 3 and set each factor equal to 0. And I get my restrictions of negative 3 and positive 3. So this function will have discontinuities Definitely spelled that wrong. At x equals negative 3 and at x equals 3. I also want to know what type of discontinuities these are, whether they are removable or non removable. In order to determine whether they are removable or non-removable, I need to know if these discontinuities are vertical asymptotes or holes in the graph. Whenever you have a vertical asymptote, that's when your discontinuity is non-removable. But if you have a hole in the graph, a hole can be filled in with a single point and that would make a continuous function. And so a discontinuity that is removable will be a discontinuity that's a whole. So to figure that out, I'm going to rewrite my function in factored form. I want to factor the numerator and factor the denominator. I have the function f of x in the numerator x squared plus 2x minus 3 can be factored. It's going to factor to be x and x, 3 and 1, with a plus on the 3 and a minus on the 1. I've already factored the denominator, x squared minus 9, to be x plus 3 times x minus 3. And what I'm looking for is common factors. So I notice that in the numerator and denominator, I have a common factor of x plus 3 over x plus 3. And that would happen to cause me to be 0 over 0 at that discontinuity. And that indicates that there is a hole at this, this discontinuity. So what discontinuity am I talking about? I can figure it out by setting that factor to 0. So at x equals negative 3, I have a hole in the graph, and so that means I can categorize that discontinuity as removable. And then at x equals 3, because I don't have a common factor 
for x minus 3. That means I would get a non-zero over zero, and that's something that indicates a vertical asymptote. And a vertical asymptote is non-removable. So at x equals 3, I have a vertical asymptote, which is non-removable. So I figured out where my discontinuities are. And the function will be continuous at all other real numbers. So maybe I can draw this on a number line. I know that I have discontinuities at negative 3 and at positive 3. But at every other real number, my function will be continuous. The function value will equal the limit value. And that's the criteria for being continuous. So my function will be continuous on the interval negative infinity to negative 3, union with negative 3 to 3, union with 3 to infinity. On this question, we have a word problem that says a person standing close to the edge on the top of a 96 foot building throws a baseball vertically upward. The quadratic function s of t equals negative 16t squared plus 16t plus 96. This function models the ball's behavior. So it will tell us the height of that baseball at any moment in time. What we want to do is find the velocity one second after the ball is hit. And this is a little bit confusing, this wording. We have throws and hits. Um, so it's really one second after the ball is thrown. And we want to find the ball's acceleration. So this quadratic function, this is called the position function. And the position function tells us the height of the ball at any moment in time. The question that we're being asked is about the velocity of the ball. When we're finding the velocity, we can take the derivative of position to find that velocity. So if we calculate the derivative of the position function, that will give us a velocity function. So in order for us to answer this question about velocity, we're going to calculate the derivative first. So the derivative of our position function, we're going to calculate the derivative of negative 16t squared. Negative 16 is a constant multiple, so we'll carry that down. The derivative of t squared will be 2t using the power rule. And then we'll take the derivative of 16t, which will be 16. The derivative of 96 will be 0, because the derivative of a constant is 0. So we have negative 16 times 2t, that's negative 32t, plus 16. Now that we have the derivative, which is the velocity, we can now say, what is the velocity one second after the ball is thrown? So we're going to substitute a time of one second into our velocity function to get negative 32 times 1 plus 16. That's negative 32 plus 16, which is negative 16. So we have the velocity after one second is negative 16, and the units on that would be feet per second. So the ball has a speed or velocity of negative 16 feet per second. So in the next part, we want to find the acceleration of the ball. And we can find the acceleration of the ball by calculating the derivative of velocity. 
and that will be the second derivative of the position function. So when we calculate the second derivative of the position function, that would be the first derivative of the velocity function, that's going to give us acceleration. So we need to calculate the second derivative. We've already got the first derivative here. We'll calculate the second derivative of the position function. The derivative of negative 32t is negative 32. The derivative of 16 is 0. So we have the ball's acceleration being negative 32. And the units on that will be feet per second squared. And this happens to be the acceleration due to gravity. On this question, we want to find the derivative using the limit definition. The limit definition of the derivative is that the derivative is equal to the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. And we want to use the function f of x equals 1 over x plus 2 to calculate the derivative. So using this limit definition, I first want to find f of x plus delta x. And that means that I'm going to replace the x in my function with x plus delta x. That's 1 over x plus delta x plus 2. Then I want to subtract the original function. So I'm going to subtract 1 over x plus 2 and divide all of that by delta x. And if you'll excuse me, I left off the limit. So the derivative is the limit as delta x approaches 0 of all of that. Now, if we were able to apply direct substitution right now, we would get 1 over x plus 0 plus 2 minus 1 over x plus 2 over 0. And that would give 1 over x plus 2 minus 1 over x plus 2 over 0. And that's 0 over 0. Now, division by 0 is undefined. But it is an indication that we can do some algebra simplification to this limit and be able to calculate that limit after the simplification. Because of the way that this expression is listed as a complex fraction, fractions within a larger fraction, I'm going to use the strategy of clearing fractions to find this limit. The limit as delta x approaches 0, Right now I'm just rewriting the problem, 1 over x plus delta x plus 2 minus 1 over x plus 2 over delta x. And we're going to clear fractions. I'm going to clear the fractions by multiplying by the least common multiple of these denominators. So I'm going to multiply by x plus delta x plus 2 times x plus 2. I do the same thing on the big numerator and the big denominator, x plus delta x plus 2 times x plus 2. I'll use the distributive property to multiply this by both terms in the numerator. And in the denominator, I will leave this in factored form. I'm leaving it in that factored form in hopes that we will have a factor that cancels out later. So in the denominator, I'm leaving that factored form delta x times x plus delta x plus 2 times x plus 2. In the numerator, I'll use the distributive property. And when I use the distributive property towards the first term, the x plus, x plus delta x plus 2 will cancel with this 
x plus delta x plus 2, and I'll only have the x plus 2. Then when I multiply with the distributive property on the second term, the x plus 2 will cancel, and I'll only be left with the x plus delta x plus 2. So I have a minus, this minus here, times x plus delta x plus 2. I'll distribute this minus to each term, giving me the limit as delta x approaches 0 of x plus 2 minus x minus delta x minus 2 over delta x times x plus delta x plus 2 times x plus 2. The x's cancel, the 2's cancel, and I'm left with a negative delta x in the numerator. And in the denominator, I have delta x times x plus delta x plus 2 times x plus 2. And I do have a common factor of delta x that cancels, which leaves me with the limit as delta x approaches 0 of negative 1 over x plus delta x plus 2 times x plus 2. Now that that common factor of delta x has canceled out, I'm going to be able to use direct substitution. So I'll substitute a 0 in for delta x to get negative 1 over x plus 0 plus 2 times x plus 2. That's negative 1 over x plus 2 times x plus 2, which is negative 1 over x plus 2 squared. So we have found that for the function 1 over x plus 2, the derivative is negative 1 over x plus 2 squared. We want to find the derivative of f of x equals x to the fourth plus square root of x plus 1 over x cubed minus 3x plus 7. I'm going to look at these individual terms. Because they're individual terms, I'm going to be able to take the derivative of them individually. I've got x to the fourth. I'll be able to use the power rule on that term. And the power rule, power rule is the derivative of x to a power is the power times x to 1 less than that power. When I look at the next term, it's the square root of x. And the square root of x can be written as x to the 1 half power. So this is another term where I can use the power rule. The next term is 1 over x cubed. And x cubed is x to the negative 3 power. So that's another term where I'm going to be able to use the power rule. I can use the power rule on negative 3x. And then the last term is a constant. So I can find the derivative of a constant is 0. The derivative of a constant is 0. Now before I calculate the derivative, I'm going to rewrite all of those terms as x to a power. So I can apply the power rule. The square root of x is x to the 1 half power. 1 over x cubed is x to the negative 3 power. And I'm copying down the other terms. I want you to notice that I have labeled this as f of x because I've only done algebra things to the terms. Now I'm going to calculate the derivative of each one of these terms. The derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed. The derivative of x to the 1 half is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. The derivative of x to the negative 3 is negative 3x to the negative 4. The derivative of 3x is 3. So I've got a minus 3. And the derivative of 7 is 0. Now 4x cubed 
plus, and I'll do a little algebra to clean this up. That's 1 over 2 square root of x minus 3 over x to the fourth minus 3. So we found the derivative to be 4x cubed plus 1 over 2 square root of x minus 3 over x to the fourth minus 3. Thank you for checking out my videos. Have a great day.